Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Let this day be a day that we overcome our double-mindedness, Lord. Help me to be single-minded, one heart, one focus on you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. James 1, verse 5 through 8. It's read, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives you all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Mm. Amen. Well, Amplify reads it this way. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through decision or circumstances, he is to ask of our benevolent God, who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame and it will be given to him. Wow. Sophia's wisdom, philosophy, love of wisdom. Sophia's in Greek means wisdom, insight, skill, and intelligence. Okay. Sophia's. So you could ask, if you lack insight, ask the Lord, God will give it to you. If you lack skill, Ask God, he'll give it to you. If you lack intelligence, ask God, because God's not going to blame you, rebuke you, but he's going to give it to you abundantly. Praise the Lord for that, right? What was that prayer that King Solomon asked? He said, therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people and discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? Wow. Solomon was at one point very wise, asking for insight, skill, intelligence, and wisdom to lead the people of God. And he did. He was a great king, except he forgot to lead his own life. Psalm 51 6 Surely you desire truth in the inmost being. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Wow, profound. Proverbs 2, 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Lord is the one who gives wisdom, and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Wow. Have you ever experienced something like you're talking, and but you're filled with the Spirit, and you say something, and you think like, I can't believe I said that. But that was pretty profound. It just came out of your mouth. That's what Paul was talking about. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love those who love me and those who seek me early shall find me. Yeah, seek God. Wisdom. Daniel 2, 21. He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and establishes them. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to the discerning. Isn't it amazing? He says he gives wisdom to the wise. Huh? If you think you're a wise person, you still need wisdom, insight, skill, and intelligence, right? So it's a full package. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and door will be opened to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Be focused. Amen. Be focused. Pulpit commentary writes this, this way. Discretion suggests by the thought of perfection. There can be no true perfection without wisdom, which is the gift of God, and must be sought from him. Mm. Let me repeat that again. It is saying the same thing, but slightly from different angles, isn't it? There can be no true perfection without wisdom, which is the gift of God, and must be sought from him. And I said, amen to that. See, we are talking about perfection now. Remember? Seek to be perfect for God is perfect. But how can it be perfect? Because it has to come from God. So he's talking about that. And verse 6, but he must ask for wisdom in faith without doubting God's willingness to help for the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed, tossed, to tossed, tossed by the wind. Christian Standard Bible reads it like this. 
but let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like a surging sea, driven, tossed by the wind. Doubting. Waves, billow, rough water, hesitation. The doubting, in other words, in Greek, is hesitate, krinos, diakrinos. Hesitate. Why are you hesitating? God says to jump. Why aren't, you, why aren't you jumping? Oh, I'm just checking to see if there's a parachute. Oh, that's not the point. God said to jump. Just jump. Whether there's a parachute or not, God's going to take care. Yeah, but it's not reasonable. I want to make sure that it spells out an Excel sheet, that it all maps out, it's squeaky clean. No, then that's not faith. That's just agreement. Do not ask God to do that. Simply trust and jump, right? Matthew 14, 28. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, command me to come to you on the water. See, Peter says, well, it's not possible for man to walk on water because of the gravitational force and physics of it. And uh, there wasn't a single person in history who walked on water, but he saw Jesus walk. And he said, Jesus, if you could do it, let me do it too. Wow, right? Matthew 21, 21, truly I tell you, Jesus replied, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what is done by this fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into sea, it will happen. You think you're amazed at that I withered a tree and it died? I'm telling you, if you have true faith, you could tell the mountain to be lifted up and thrown into the ocean, it will be done. What are you saying? That's impossible. Yeah, that's why you're asking. That's why you believe. You believe what is impossible. That's what faith is, right? Hmm. Acts 10, 20. So get up, go downstairs and accompany them without hesitation because I have sent them. We're talking about Peter. Peter's wondering like, Lord, do I go with them? And God says, why are you hesitating? Why are you doubting? You know, there's a sign. I already show it to you. You know it's me. If you know it, it's me, why do you need to hesitate? Why do you need to doubt? Because if you doubt, you'll be like infant. Ephesians 4.14. Then we'll no longer be infants tossed about by the waves and carried around every wind of teaching and by cl 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 clever, cunning men in their deceitful scheming. God, you, you act so childish in faith. How come your faith is like a child? Always hesitating, always doubting, always going left, go here, go there, to the right. And every wind of teaching, like, I follow Paul, I follow Cephas, I follow, you know, brother of Jesus and, and all this nonsense. Hmm. No, and it says, do not do that. Have faith, do not move, do not waver. One of the commentary, Jameson Fawcett Brown Bible commentary says, ask in faith, that is persuasion that God can and will give. James begins and ends with faith. No wavering, limiting, right? Limiting God. And, and, and your faith is like driven with the wind, being going left and right. Stop. It's going to talk about why it is so because we are double-minded seven and eight and let not the man thinks he will receive anything from the lord jehovah whoever wavers in his mind is troubled in all his ways or king james a double-minded man is unstable in all its ways double-minded only happens here and james 4 8 in New Testament. That's it. No one, nowhere else in the Bible talks about double-mindedness. And because, remember I told you that this book was written for Jews all over diaspora. When they talk about people's heart toward David in 1 Chronicles 12, 20, 33, they're going for the war and a heart and a heart. They were one heart with King David. So it wasn't double-minded. So James is coining or picking up from their cultural understanding, hey, 
Remember those time when King David and all his followers were of one mind, not double-minded? Be like that. And when you be like that with God, then you are going to receive all that you request. If you're not like that, if you're double-minded, don't even think about receiving anything from God, right? Because that's not going to happen. Wow. And it starts out by saying, ask for wisdom. Be wise. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish and be double-minded, thinking that you're going to receive anything from the Lord. When No, be wise. Have insight, skill, intelligence, and ask the Lord. Those things that God already has prepared for you. You know, the greatest answer prayer is when you pray God's will. Then it's his bill, and it will be done. And you don't really have to sweat over it. Why? Because, well, he wanted to give it to you anyways. See, the problem is that you're 13 year old and you want God to give you BMW. It's going to take you at least four or five years before you turn legal, right? I don't care how good of a parents you think you have. No good parents will give you a BMW when you're 13 year old. See, but when you are 13 year old asking, Dad, can I have some milk with my cereal? Yes, son, I was going to give it to you anyway. So you don't really have to sweat over that. And when you return, when you become 18, 19, and you like to go school by yourself, so you don't bother dad, so dad, is it possible for me to get a car so I could drive my, yes, son, I was preparing for that. Anyways, here's our key. See, when you know God's will, pray according to his will, getting it is a cinch. So, but when you're double-minded, not without wisdom, and you just going back and forth, doubting, hesitating, without any wisdom, then, yeah. yeah. Nothing is going to happen. So today, let's seek the Lord. Let's not be double-minded about anything. But our whole heart, focus on Jesus. And then ask the Holy Spirit, God, to just, Lord, I would like to fulfill your will today. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, let it be so. Amen and amen and amen, brothers and sisters. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Mwah.